Number 1. Amajit Sada is guilty of one confirmed kill, but he is suspected of killing at least two others, and if this is true, it would make him the youngest serial killer in history, at the age of only eight. This is one of those murders that is hard to get out of your head due to the sheer brutality and evil of the killing. In January 2007, a mother in a small village in India left her six-month-year-old infant unattended in a local primary school. The child was just sleeping while she took care of some personal errands. While she was gone, little eight-year-old Sada snatched the baby and took it to a nearby field. Sada then laid the small, innocent child onto the grass and then picked up a brick and repeatedly struck the child in the head. After he was done, he attempted to bury the child in some grass and some leaves. But this wasn't the first time that he had killed. Apparently, Sada started killing approximately one year before he was finally turned over to the authorities by his family. During his one year killing spree, he is believed to have taken the lives of three people. All of his victims were babies, and all of them from the village which he was raised in, with the oldest being his eight month old sister. It's unknown why he targeted babies, but it is theorized that it was due to their small size and vulnerability. Family members claimed that Sada had already bludgeoned his one year old cousin and eight month old sister to death, and they said that they had enough of his behavior, so they summoned the police. Sada then calmly told them that he killed her by beating her with a brick. He then also took them to the scene of the crime, where they found the baby under the leaves. There is no confirmation whether he killed his cousin and sister, and there isn't any explanation why his relatives didn't contact the authorities earlier to turn him in for his previous crimes, which means it's unclear whether or not he is the world's youngest serial killer. But then again, I wouldn't put it past him. And it should be disturbing enough that he murdered an infant with a brick at such a young age. But the part of the story that I found most chilling is during the police questioning, they asked him why he killed three small babies. Sada smiled and then just asked for a cookie, which shows how evil this child is and that he didn't take any of the charges seriously. Sada contacted the media in 2015 to report that he was staying in a youth home until the age of 18, and he reached the age of 18 in 2016, which means he is out there somewhere now, under a new name. Number 2 A four-year-old named Derek Robbie lived in a small village in New York called Savona. He was known as the unofficial mayor. This was because he used to sit on his bike and wave at cars as they passed. In 1993, on the 2nd of August, Derek was on his way to a summer recreational program in a park, which was only a couple of minutes away from where he lived. But on this particular day, he was alone. This was because his mother had to look after her youngest son. Before Derek left, he gave his mother a kiss and told her he loved her, and this was the last time she would see him alive. His mother went to the park to pick him up, but when she got there, she discovered he didn't even turn up. A search was soon underway, and in some woods between the park where he was going to, they would soon find little Derek's body. From the best available evidence, it seemed like whoever had killed Derek had lured him away into the woods and then strangled him. The killer had used a rock to batter the boy with and then took the Kool-Aid from his lunchbox and poured it into his head wounds. And if that wasn't horrific enough, the killer then used a stick to sodomize the poor boy. A few days passed and a 13 year old boy named Eric Smith came in to help solve the crime. 
he spoke to the investigator on the case. He originally denied seeing Derek on the day that he was murdered, but he accidentally placed himself at the scene of the crime after changing his story several times. He then described the boy's lunchbox and his clothes. Eric was a troubled young boy who was relentlessly bullied at school because of his appearance. He had red hair, freckles, and large glasses. He also had some learning difficulties too, from a birth complication due to medications his mother took during pregnancy. He was also known to have serious anger issues and violent outbursts. The evidence began to stack against Eric, and three days after Derek's funeral, he confessed to the murder. Because of the disturbing sexual nature of his crime, it's speculated that Derek might have faced sexual abuse, which caused him to do this to poor Derek. But it has never been proved. It shocks and sickens me to think that somebody so young could do something so despicable, especially to such a young and innocent child. Eric is still behind bars to this day and has recently been denied release, which I think is for the best. Number 3. In the year 2011, Daniel Bartlam, who was 14 at the time, fled his burning house with his younger brother and his dog and waited for the emergency services to arrive. When the police questioned him, he told them that somebody had broken into the house, harmed his mother and then set the house on fire. After this initial statement, Daniel then told the police the haunting truth. He said that he crept into his mother's room at night time with a claw hammer in his hand. He then stood over his own mother while she slept and as he looked upon her he raised the hammer and struck her in the head seven times. After he was done he poured petrol around the bedroom and set the home alight. His mother's body was only identified because of her dental records. During a search of the house, the police found the hammer used in the attack in Daniel's bedroom. They also found a document on his computer where he had written a story featuring a character bearing his own name who murdered his mother. The part that I found extremely disturbing was that a popular TV show in the UK called Coronation Street had recently shown a story where one of the characters had killed a woman with a hammer and the whole storyline in the TV show bared a striking resemblance to what Daniel had done. The police also found TV clips of the scene from the episode of Coronation Street along with other violent scenes from popular films on Daniel's computer. The media then dubbed Daniel as the Coronation Street Killer. Daniel's stepfather had spoken about Daniel's behaviour before the incident occurred and he said that he had plastic boxes full of Star Wars and Doctor Who figures but he would just urinate in the boxes. Apparently Daniel also defecated all over his bedroom and what's quite strange is that Daniel was raised by his mother in a very stable home and was by all accounts a normal young boy. The family had moved to a different area in 2009 and that's the year where he started to become a little bit more reclusive, spending most of his time alone in his bedroom, playing video games and watching horror films. His stepfather also blamed him playing video games and watching the horror films on the reason why he murdered, but I don't think that's true. Daniel said that he killed his mother because of an argument that they had had, but with no evidence of abuse within the family home, the motive is still pretty unclear. As some of you may know, YouTube will be changing its terms and services soon, 
and it will make it harder for smaller channels like mine to grow. So please, if you appreciate or enjoy the content, give it a like or a comment. It will help smaller channels like mine to grow. And if you're feeling extra generous, please share it on social media or with your friends. I'd be very grateful. Thank you.